Uh, welcome back to Fox and Good Day. From dealing with dying ivy, guilty, to box elder bugs, right over here. <laughs> oh, we've got some gardening questions on our minds right now. And who better to ask than our own garden guy, Dale Kay? He's here now to answer those questions. And we're going to do some questions that you submitted as well. It's not all about us. No, yeah, no. Although we have our own. Uh, we're going to start with Hi. us, though. Yeah. Hey, Dale. <laughs> uh, we know you didn't get this from my, my house because they're dead, uh, or at least half of them. Just like, I guess, probably one of the arteries was cut. And People are really passionate about the ivies. I get that they're not they're not great for the brick and mortar and all that, but so what do I do with my dying ivy? So you're in an established neighborhood, and that's kind of one of the endearing things about ivy, especially with those older homes, adds a little charm, little character, maybe a little Victorian kind of era to your home, to your home <laughs> as, I, as I get that out. So there's, there's Alex's home. And oh, yeah, there's some green, but there's also some dead there as well. And the, I guess the thing with ivy is they have tendrils. They actually have little things like Spider-Man that kind of stick to the walls. Yes, and I if know. If you look really close, you can actually almost see them. I have a, like a green suckers. example yep. and a dead mm -hmm. example of those little tendrils. Oh. And they will hold on even though the plant has kind of, uh, you know, not, has lost its leaves or has died. Right? Once you take the ivy away, you can see those little suckers on there. And so these things are kind of stuck to your... Mm -hmm. Stuck to your home. It's not just like a shrub that you can go and prune back and Bob's your uncle. It's it's taken care of. So to pull that to pull them off your home too. You mentioned the stucco on the brick. It's actually quite a challenge. You got to do it super carefully. Mm -hmm. But with dead ivy, you've just got to prune it back just like any other plant. But you've got to be really careful. You know, ladders involved, um, all sorts of things like yeah. that. So uh, or you can just leave it as a little bit of like. Halloween charm. More character. <laughs> yes. Halloween. I like that. <laughs> Halloween charm. <laughs> She's gonna go with that at least through Halloween. Then we'll deal with it, right? Yeah. Uh, next up, Bridget. She sent us a photo of her plant and said, "What can I do to help her? Help almost, her, Dale." It's almost like a cabana, right? You, it's it almost is. like you're on the beach there <laughs> in, a, in a cabana. That's sure. actually a Norfolk Island pine. Um, they're sold fairly readily um, around the holiday season. And I got a picture actually of my hometown in Glenelg, Australia. Um, there's a cute little um, bistro there. It's called the Broadway. Um, I have coffee there when I go back home. But you notice those big tall pine trees in the background? Yes. That is the same plant. That's oh. Norfolk Island pine. Norfolk Island, um, wow. just off the coast of Australia, about 1,600 miles or thereabouts. And they're native to that area. Uh, Captain Cook planted them all over the Pacific Islands because it's some of the straightest timber in the world. So uh, as these sailing boats were going around, he'd, he'd plant them. So if there was ever any problems with ships or anything like that, the wood, they would have uh, a source of lumber. Um, that particular one, if you go back to that photo of, of the cabana style Norfolk Island pine, uh, it's pretty much been almost decapitated. You know, like the, the top leader has been taken off. Yeah. So that plant isn't really going to do too much else except kind of have its style there. And I actually think it's kind of a cool style. Um, maybe a little it's bit of a It's kind of like a bonsai. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> like a larger than life bonsai. Um, but a kind of a cool plant nonetheless. Um, a little bit of fertilizer, maybe a little bit of tip pruning might push out some new growth, but nothing much more on the height. And it's, it's just kind of, it, it, you know, it's a big pine tree and it's going to start to look like a big pine tree as it gets older, even without its leader. Can she move it outside? Um, that would be great. You know, during the summer months, um, and then bring it back inside for the winter. It's not hardy. She's gonna need to cut a little mm. hole in her ceiling. Yeah, I kind of yeah, like. I, so. I, I get some little bit of beach sand there, and a, and a my tire martini, or I don't know, whatever, whatever you like to guzzle on the beach, and just you know, have that. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, all right, we're going to Laura now. She writes, should I cut back my perennials in the fall, or should I leave them for the spring? That's actually a really good question, and I guess perennials fall into two different categories. Or I, you know, for this question, two different categories: those that bloom in the spring and summer, and then those that bloom in the fall. And I have a couple of examples on the end there. The one closest to Shane that's out of flower, that's the dead seed heads there. That's a delphinium. That was a, a spring or a, you know mid-season bloomer. The other ones on the end there, the cone flower, the sedum, they're fall bloomers. So you want to kind of leave those up. And even the sedum, we were talking about that a little bit earlier. When my kids were younger, you know, dioramas. You have to make those dioramas. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if I'm saying that word yeah, right. Um, but I've actually used that as little trees. Now, sedums actually make good little trees oh, cute. for dioramas. Yeah. So those fall ones you can actually leave up, right? Your, all your ornamental grasses, those that create a little bit of uh, winter interest. The same with the coneflower. A lot of those will create winter interest. So if it's a spring bloomer, go ahead and cut it back. If it's something like an ornamental grass or you like the winter interest, um, go ahead and, and then prune it in the spring. No matter what, they're going to have to get pruned at some point. The trick with pruning, if you want to grab those pruners there, yeah, you and do ahead. the delphinium. Yeah. I like to leave out. about, careful, they're sharp. I like to leave about four or five inches of stubble 
I was just going to ask how far you cut it down. Yeah, which so one about I, which four one or five curly? inches of stubble. This bad boy? Yep, cut yep. that and just... About right there? Yep. See, I've, I've got dead... And the um, reason I like to leave, and if delphinium. you just want to pull that out so you oh. can see the... Wow, the she's serious about that. Oh, Look at that. Like you can, come to my, you can come to my house. I'm looking for a, I'm looking for a garden. <laughs> for a garden. Um, wow. The four okay. or five inches of stubble, what that does is leaves and snow will kind of collect around there and it actually helps provide a little bit of uh, extra insulation if you leave that kind of little bit of stubble there. That's good to know. Yeah. That was really refreshing. I feel like I got <laughs> something out. You're proud now, right? Yeah, I'm going to do that at home. It's crazy. Uh, last one. I was um, watering my milkweed for my butterfly in my butterfly garden and they had box elder bugs all over them. Not okay, right? We don't want them there. That's not for them. So they're, they like all the maple trees. So wherever there's okay. maple trees or Ace and Agunda, the box elder maple, that's where they are. They tend to swarm at this time of year. They're kind of getting ready for, oh. for winter. They're really not doing any harm to our plants per se, but they do like to harbor up against something warm like your home. Yes, so it's always do. a good mm -hmm. idea to seal your home. You can kind of take care of them a couple of different ways. There's a couple of home remedies, a little sure. bit of 50 water, 50 vinegar, spray, the, spray them with that. That'll kind of, kind of move them on. Also, if they're against your siding something that looks like your siding and then you apply a little bit of Vaseline to the siding they get kind of get stuck to that well, that's kind of that's, oh, that's sad. That's sad. I do really no, want that. They're not. They're oh. not. They're all over no. my no. Like, no, no, try no. to come in my house. No. A lot of work. Also, fine. diatomaceous earth. That will. Um, that's a powder that can go on around the site, around your home. Um, we won't talk about what that does to them. Um, but it's actually not a bag. <laughs> it's not like it's super toxic, or then you can spray as well. But the good news is really not any harm to your plants. Okay. More unsightly, and that swarming thing gets a little bit unnerving, especially when they're around your home. You don't want them in the your garage home. Garage doors mm -mm. are everywhere. No. I like it. Ugh. Yuck. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Good tips. Very good. Yeah, hey, if you want to see them, if you miss something, you want to see the name of something, we're going to have it on our Facebook page. Search Fox 9 Good Day. And if you have more questions for Dale, bring them on. Feel free to send us those I'm on doing social nothing media. For the rest of the day. That's you know, okay. Let's get it going. Answer questions all day. There are many of you.